Okay, so uh, let's start with um, a little bit with the documents to understand the context. So, uh, so basically, that's our goal. So uh, we, I try, I try to um, to help you to be able to make this uh, velocity product. So basically, that's uh, that the uh, usually that we're talking about the currency. I can tell you that uh, the currency we're talking about is the velocity. So if we're talking about just the um, the measurement at a certain time related to the deformation, so that is just a millimeter or something like that one. But when we're talking about velocity, it's a millimeter per year. So basically that. When using this product, we explore many observations, something like 20 or even more. And in this case, we can achieve something like millimeter per year and with a currency about less than one or less than one millimeter per year. So try to be very clear. We're talking about a currency that is the velocity, and it should be in the unit of millimeter per year. And the currency we expect is something like one meter, millimeter per year. That's all, not for deformation. Because why? Because when we're doing the time series processing, we have many products. And the products we're talking about, the currency, the better currency is come from the velocity products only. Okay, so uh, moving on. So basically, that's what we are going to do. We're going to start. A stammy a very well document if you don't have it you can go to this one to see under uh, to see the menu if you want to further information and they have very active uh, google um, forum to discuss so uh, after this course if you don't know anything you can go to directly go to the mesa you face some uh, some uh, technical problem I, I don't think so there's some technical problem because why it's quite stable nowadays so um okay so in this tutorial so basically that when we in fact we're going to run it in a, a terminal if you had a linux you want to terminal if you have window i recommend you to you which one i forgot in window which one i recommend you which one let me track in a window in window you if you um, if, if there is some person who uses window you can use a window subsystem for liners something like uh, linux run running in window so it's very similar in linux so uh okay so uh and then uh with this uh simple we run it in matlab okay so going to process it so uh, what we are going to uh, to do is we will use uh, um uh, 20 images with uh, one master image so the other one is will be uh, generate in a different so into the program so uh, uh, the master one we select is the one we got uh, got to be familiar into in 2018 September 30 so uh, before moving on we had to be sure that everything is correctly so we had to set up the, um, the environment to be sure that it's correctly so I suppose that you already installed uh, stamp and you know where the stamp and stamping. Uh, okay, so uh, in here to be sure everything is okay for you, I run parallel uh, in the window and in um, uh, in uh, Linux also. So my, here's in my Linux uh, terminal. So let me try. <laughs> Uh, where we are okay so i'm here uh so i i just want to be sure that uh, we we have this one so i just want to echo to track in do we have a stamp okay so i have stamp already in the in my computer uh okay do i have matlab in my computer uh okay uh so everything's okay so i'm going to go into the data so 
what do we have? We have seven. Do we have? Uh, okay. So uh -huh, we I, I got something that I done already. So I just want that I don't want it. I just want to clear everything. So okay. Okay, so you see that uh, this is my Linux uh, terminal. So I have I inside the folder, and I have the four folder together with you. Just try to be sure that uh, we got how many units here. Like okay, okay. So we have more than uh, two images. So basically, that exactly the, about twenty images. Okay, so. Uh, uh, we done already for setup of environments, and uh, we move to this folder also. So first of all, I we going to select the candidate of the stable target to do for processing. So you using this com this command. So this one it should be uh, empty prepare snap, and this one is the um, the day of master, and it's here in the the link to the the folder. And then here in the press hole, so use that um, zero point four is a good one. But uh, to um, to in this uh, to in this um, tutorial to to uh, just to, to uh, demonstration, we uh, set is zero point twenty five is okay to to speed up processing. Uh, maybe my processing will be not enough. I just set okay. So let me track. Uh, Empty preparation. Empty preparation. Snap. Just may I ask you a question? Uh, yes. Um, I noticed you removed uh, several files from the folder. Uh, I think we have the same. Uh, when I download the the file uh, you provide us. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, I mean, uh, should we remove uh, all as well? Uh, just. Uh, Pay attention a little bit because why? Because I I afraid there is someone who cannot uh, run this step. Uh, I mean this this one empty preparation snap. I afraid there is someone who cannot run this step. So that's why I copy the the output of this step also. So if you are sure that you uh, you are running uh, is okay, so you can remove this one. You just keep uh, for folder like this one. That's okay. Can, I'm sorry. Can you show me how he, how you download everything else? Just, I'm not that familiar with with the command line. Uh, how how uh, do you remove the the rest of the files? How I can I remove the rest of the file? Uh, up. Just remove all, and then we remove the the folder one. Right. Okay. Thank you. Remove. And then you remove the the past one. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that is the one I get you here. Right, you you see the many file like this one, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, you can remove this one and remove the folder here to be sure that you have this one. Okay, okay, I'll do, I'll do. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I. I'm waiting a little bit. In meantime, I'm going to run it in a window to show you how we done it in window. Is it necessary for you? So I go to window, uh, my window, what, what I have to do. Okay, uh, okay, my Ubuntu here. So what do I have? Uh, I just want to... Okay. 
Okay, so we got it here. So I have four folder exactly in uh, in Linux. So so I run in uh, Windows first. Okay. So how can we done? Let's empty. Uh, what is Okay, empty iteration, snap, and the master day 2018, September 30, and then these are founder. And then the press of Europe on, I think Europe on two is okay. It's okay for this tutorial, so we keep zero one two. Is okay. Hit the run. So okay, at this run five. I run it parallel in uh, Linux. So empty reiteration snap. Should be to sell. Okay. So you see here that is exactly the same, but different uh, uh, path because of different system. So I write it here. So in parallel, one in window and one in uh, Linux. Um, <clears throat> I have a few questions. These yep. scripts, they are um, MATLAB based? And the script and you can, you don't need anything to relate to MATLAB. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you empty repair snap, you don't need anything in uh, in uh, MATLAB. Okay. When you don't need one, we go into MATLAB. Because you, you write that um, when we are when we are getting familiar with the stamps script, we can build and execute without the need of MATLAB. Exactly. Exactly. But whenever you whenever you finish, you you can uh, combine the MATLAB code in. Uh, in SQD code, you don't need anything to MATLAB. Okay. Okay. But you still say that we need at least four MATLAB toolboxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do this uh, tutorial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if it's not MATLAB, what is it? Is it Python? No, is it MATLAB? It's MATLAB. Okay. So it's uh, in MATLAB without uh, MATLAB. Okay. People have a, a lot of effort to uh, to. Uh, to rewrite them in uh, in Python, but not successful because it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's complicated. It is. Okay. Thanks. In STAM, we have the duct data S path is okay, but for the, um, the persistent scatter, uh, it's not available. Still under development. So you see in uh, in Linux it's quite fast. Window is called a little bit slower. Slower. So uh, whenever I've done this one, I can run it in um, MATLAB. So we go to MATLAB. We have MATLAB here. Uh, okay, so it's okay. It's okay. It's done. It's done for the window. Uh, okay, I just 
you learn to MATLAB. So because of, uh, first of all, we love the data. We just try to be sure that everything in, um, in the input file and the um, uh, result is uh, have the same file correction. Let me try. Is this okay? So the input file here. So we got this one, this one, this one, this one. Question, I got errors. Yeah, it's me, I'm sorry. When I ran the the empty snap, I got this error. Whatever name must contain alpha number. Did you track uh, this one? You should have this one. Did you export this one? I mean, oh, you, okay. You okay, thank you. Uh, I'll try again. Thank you. So I have to track this one uh, correct, uh, correctly because it's in other system. So uh, whenever I done it here, so here window, they don't understand this one. I have to come revert this one. So, Okay, so I have to change this one. Okay, so I put this one. And this will be five. Okay, so I'm going to uh, MATLAB. So the first step, we, we load the data. So uh, that's very easy. In STAM, we have uh, the uh, two inputs, the first and the second. Uh, after one comma here, here is the starting step. Here is the ending step. So here we, uh, we just uh, go for step one to check everything's okay. So one, one. So we're going to step STAM one. One and one. So it's running. It's not in the wrong. So it's finished. So that's in my in my window. So everything's okay. Everything's easy. I just want to check it in my uh, Linux. Everything's okay. No. So let me try if it's okay. Okay. And so I track uh, stamp. So one to one. So it's running. You see, everything is okay for step one, everyone. That is the more critical one. You have to finish step one before going to step two, and so on. So step one is just uh, help you to uh, lock everything in the MATLAB file. So you see here, they were set in the past here. Put everything in, in uh, the MATLAB file here. Okay, so we're going to the, the second step. The second step, what we will do, they try to, to the, um, the coherent, basically that the, the, they will try to estimate the temporal coherent to try to have a, a better idea to uh, remove some, some bit cell, some uh, candidate that is not good. 
And then they we try to repeat seven times to be sure that everything is perfectly. So to run it, just very easy, stamp two by two. It's okay for everyone on step one. Okay for me. Right. Okay, okay. Okay, if you've done it, you can run to stamp two. For me, it's just, there's nothing wrong until now. Okay. So I run in parallel, one in linear and one in window. Uh, just to double check what you call the temporal coherence, is it how well the data fits on the linear trend over time? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So here is a little bit uh, boring, just, we just uh, when we're running, we're just uh, waiting a little bit. So uh, feel free to ask me anything. Actually, I would have loved to do a, um, a screenshot of the G Design uh, um, MATLAB um, command that you run, but you're using MATLAB right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So maybe, uh, maybe after, after. Okay, after. The G design matrix have unwrap say more easier in BS inside. No, why? No, no. The Z design is just uh, the way to do least square only. So here is, for example, here the face is already uh, unwrapping. You see here the observation and the face is already unwrapping. Here, I just want to uh, to uh, to highlight that for example, that what does it mean the gene uh, matrix, and then what does it mean when we're talking about the least square estimation, and that's all. And for the for the BF inside, the the gene matrix is not designed for really the uh, the face errors. Why? Because uh, when we're dealing with the um, the, the BF inside. We just have a how can I say we have just one for the beard inside we have just one star network like this one like fish network here you see here just one super master and all the other image we do uh, in the program so we don't have anything related to um, how can generate a certain close to to be sure everything is, uh, is, can be uh, checkable. Uh, in the DS network is different and the DS network is different. They have uh, some uh, close to, to do to do quality checking. 
Like this one, one, two, three, they have a certain close rule here. Like one, two, three, they have a certain close rule here. One, two, three, they have a certain close rule here to do calculation, to do a close rule estimation, to be sure that the fake correct, to do the fake um, unwrapping uh, checking. If we want to do fake unwrapping checking, uh, we need to go into uh, the S path. So, yeah, I wanted to check the, the MATLAB command for that. The MATLAB command for which one? For the, the GDesign matrix that you. Okay. Uh, okay, where is this? Um, let me try to remember what is this. This one. So uh, the G matrix is just basically that you see here. Uh, that's just the matrix of minus one for the preference one. I open this one for you, this one, yeah. So you see here, that is the first column, the second column and the third column. So the second column is the preference one and, this, and the third column is the secondary one. So, uh, in the design matrix, we put uh, the um, preference one is equal minus one, like this one you see here, minus one, and uh, one equal to secondary. And that's one for the design matrix. So everything you see in uh, the open source software, like, uh, how can I say, like, uh, Like MinPy, MinPy, or uh, list, uh, list S pass, or N S pass, and so on. I mean, everything related to the S path um, estimator. They just, what they done is done design matrix. And whenever the design matrix is done, they do this one. And then and they got the time series of the data. Okay. So it's quite easy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you mind go, just going back to your um, MATLAB, um, yes. MATLAB simple? Yeah, can you go down a bit? Yes. After, just to see the, okay, just to plot, okay. Uh, good description of that. Okay, tag. And, and then the the for loop, it it just read the the matrix that you just created before. This one, the for loop. For loop. The for loop. The loop. Uh, the, the loop, loop for. The loop here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It yes. just read the the file that the matrix that you have created before or it makes it no it generate it generate generate here so here yeah. it define caps it's just zero and then i go to the four matrix here the four for loop just to generate okay so i can run it again just everything is okay so it's quite fast I just want to So you see here, so you see 
until here, G is just zero and zero, right? Mm -hmm. F is zero, so we generate here. So suppose that I give uh, E equal to one, like E equal to one, and got this one. Okay. And we got G. So you see here. Okay. You got to get generate. So E equal to two, got this one. And then you see it's one here. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. So we go back. Come back here. So we going to stem uh, through and ready, right? This finish, and then we going to stem for three by three. It's okay for you for the second step. So basically in step three, what I'm going to do is to try to figure out which one is the noise one and they try to wrap it by based on uh, the neighborhoods nearby. So I go to this one, so this one are finished. Three by three. So it's okay. So Everything is fine for you, nothing difficult. Okay, step two by two is okay, so. We're waiting to see together. So the flag for the for the small baseline, and mm. the flag for the small baseline. Does it mean the uh, noise base? No, on your um, parameter file. Uh, yeah, here. This one. Uh, yeah, it's written small baseline flag equal n. Does it mean no? No, no. Uh, just wait a moment. Uh, small baseline, oh, where is this? Yes, you're, you're here. Yeah. 
because we we are going to processing for the BS uh, methods only. Okay. Okay. So that's why they no. Okay. Some they support for the small baseline also. Okay. When you got uh, familiar with the uh, BS, you can uh, increase your knowledge by, for spawn baseline. It's called straightforward, so nothing difficult. But the, uh, the, the difficult is to try to, to get the first step, and after that, it, it will be uh, more easier, more convenient. When you, under, when you understand the concept, the principle, and this will be fine. <clears throat> now that is very difficult for the COVID enough, the COVID nineteen. Did you take the everyone take the the, the, vac the vaccine vaccination? Uh, yes, we we got the vaccine. Ah. Uh, I I did at least. <laughs> ah, okay. So, uh, is there any problem with your vaccine? I mean, they, is there any secondary effect or no? Uh, the day after the vaccine, uh, I, I felt a bit tired. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yesterday morning, I checked the um, uh, the second second one. And the second shock, I mean, the first shock is okay, nothing then uh, there's no secondary effect for me, but the second effect uh, is terrible. Yesterday until now, I'm very tired, I don't know. Yes, yes. Yeah. But the second shock is very difficult, but it, it's be fine, it's will be fine now. Exactly, uh, it's just uh, maybe for one day and then uh, yeah. better. Roland, you, you are in Paris? Uh, yes, I'm in Paris. Okay. And everything uh, is open over there? A lot of people outside, I guess so? Uh, yes, yes. But uh, uh, they're saying that uh, tomorrow the president is going to speak. He might uh, shut down uh, some things because of the new variant. Uh, really? President Macron, he's going to shut down again? Yeah, we're not sure he's speaking uh, tomorrow. Okay, because I I I saw that they a lot of most uh, to talking about the um, the firework for the national day. Fourth, I mean, fourteen July. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, if they're going to do something, it's going to be like just uh, a curfew, like. Uh, we just have to get home before uh, 11 at night or something like that. Okay. Okay, but uh, it's really difficult for everyone if everything is going to set down again in this uh, holiday. Yes. Yeah. The pandemic is, is crazy, but also it's really helpful for us because we learn a lot how to do in a virtual way. Like last year, it's really difficult for me to, to get interacted with all the person, with all the people in, um, in Zoom like this one. And after one year, everything is looked by comfortable, comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, we got 
uh, used to. I just want to track away to to are you there? No. So uh, my one is about sixty thousand. It's going to finish very soon. Uh, okay, still waiting for passing. Okay, I'm in the end. Okay, one stop for passing. <laughs> Uh, I have a question concerning uh, the PS method. Yes. I, I know that uh, the method, the original one, is maybe protected by a patent. Uh, exactly. So if, uh, if you want to test it for academic purposes, we can. But if you want to do a commercial product, we can't. Uh, or we need to pay for the patent or something like that. Uh, uh, is, is this accurate? Uh, how can I say? So basically that um, uh, the PS, the original metros, like the PS and the, the, the recently the PS, DS, we also paid them. And, um, but that's just one way to do implementation. So uh, if you do something uh, a little bit different, like the way of Sasuke and uh, Gamma. They did also the BS processing, but the, the approach is, is a little bit different, not exactly the same. So uh, I, I don't know, but there is also uh, uh, maybe it's conflict, but I, I think nowadays two companies still, um, uh, still provide some uh, certain uh, market. So I think that is go, uh, go along very well. So maybe there is no conflict between the, um, the BS patent and the other company they want to develop something related to a BS algorithm. Because why? Because of the, because it can be a little bit different algorithm and, and it will be fine. I guess so. That's why the Gamma and Sasuke, they still available and they're still very strong. So to try to, uh, uh, is a good uh, question. I just want to, so back again, the, um, the software here. So you see here, um, this one, this one. So you see here that the TIE uh, at Timira or nowadays, that is the, the one who had the patent related to um, uh, the BS and the um, BSDS methods. So uh, the question, is there any conflict in terms of the patent of using the technique? Uh, the answer is no, because uh, all the company like Gamma and uh, Sasuke, they also the commercial uh, company and they also provide the technique. But uh, of course, this implementation is quite different uh, from a TIE, but it can get some uh, something uh, more or less uh, the same performance. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, you see here the gamma and the Sasuke they also commercial and also exploit the same technique. Okay, okay, super. <laughs> so it's one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh it's going to finish very soon.
So we are waiting. Is step three? Uh, okay. So to question, is there any difference in inversion of the real phase between these methods and their singular value decomposition for s -pass? Uh So basically that uh, is um, uh, for the s -pass, usually that they have a many network like this one I show you here, uh, like this one. Whenever they have a network like this one, they can do the, the SVD to get this one. So basically that uh, uh, usually from here to here, it's just one, uh, one relation, everything linked to the super master. So with the, um, with the BS metrics, they don't actually, they don't, they don't use anything related to singular value decomposition, but in the air, in the S path metrics, because the network is linked together here. So, Whenever they want to transform from this network to this network, they have to do some uh, SVD uh, operator. So uh, it's, uh, it's not really uh, different or not, but uh, in the BS, there's no, no SVD. In BS, no SVD. Uh, I have another question. Yes. Um, what is, in your opinion, the most difficult st step in uh, doing interferometry and time series interferometry and where uh, most research uh, should be focused at? Uh, nowadays, you mean? Nowadays, yes. The, the step that uh, needs to be uh, improved or the, the most difficult one. Uh, yeah, the most difficult one nowadays is uh, people try to um, to get uh, how can to um, how can to um, emulate. I mean, uh, how to uh, increase the signal to noise of the BS and to make me come to the BS. That's the one. I mean, we would try to improve in such a way that the distributed scatterer to have a good quality and make it become the persistent scatter that is the more typical. And to do that, usually we have to handle something related to um, um, uh, static uh, homogeneous. I mean, we explore many information related to uh, uh, the position nearby of that target. And we try to explore many uh, this cell nearby, and then we use the, that phase to improve quality of the DS. And in that case, the, uh, the signal to noise of uh, the DS is enhanced. And in that case, it can be, uh, become the BS. And that's a really challenging problem because why? Because it depends on how to exploit the window, how to exploit the, um, the test, uh, the hypothesis uh, test and how to do the conversion of the, uh, the covariant matrix to become uh, the time series of the, um, the phase. Like, okay, you can quit. Uh, uh, Roland, you make a question, right? Uh, uh, yes. You can uh, query something like, uh, something like, uh, uh, how can I say, linking? Phase linking. 
cái link kia dạ and dạ uh, yeah. okay yeah. sure uh, uh, thank you You're welcome That is the, the most challenging task because why? Because if we make everything uh, DS become uh, DS and that is perf perfectly because why? Because we have we will have a lot of data to processing. Yes, uh, so uh, <coughs> it's a big data challenge and it's increasing the coverage also. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Uh, my LinkedIn, I have LinkedIn, but I'm not really uh, professional on that one. Let me track it. Uh, okay. Very good question. LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn. That's my one. Uh, Notification to me, my profile, my profile. So, yes, that, that's one. That's one. That's I am, but I'm not really uh, familiar with the social network. So, basically, that's at least my BSD in. Um, in Politanico in Milano with uh, Professor Fabio Rocca. Uh, I'm not really familiar with uh, LinkedIn. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, that's my friend, so a uh, long time also. Okay, so you see, I'm actually getting touch with the LinkedIn. Yeah. So, is there anything new in my LinkedIn? No, I don't know. Breakthrough in quality of someone for I velocity. <laughs> so the base uh as I have some background with Python screen and I feel okay to work with the code. So we want to work with this application to return the from future. My piece of what's our latest software so I start with. Ah, if you have a great background in Python script, uh, you can start. You can start. Yes. Because the eyes they develop in um, uh, in Python, many uh, uh, many function is in Python. So if you're familiar with Python, eyes back, eyes okay. So you can uh, have eyes. You need to to stamp is okay. There's a link. That is one. I already show you for. La David, you see here, there is a, a way to, to link between um, inside and tertiary that you can use in eyes to stamp. So I is this one. So where is this? I here. So basically that is the, 
the Osoka. So you can go there and just see all the information available. GMT star is not really um, a web performance. I don't know why, but uh, I see the, the community is a little bit uh, limited. Did I track and read GMT star here? No. Ah, okay, here. Okay, then my computer is done for step three. So uh, after step three, what, what, uh, what exactly we uh, we have here? So basically that's a day that will be available information at the BS uh, candidate. So uh, we go to step four, but maybe that they can uh, have some information we need to rub up. So basically that's just a secondary uh, selection for the BS. If uh, maybe if some bond is very close together, we can uh, rub it, but usually it's just uh, it's not necessary to rub up because why? Because the, uh, in this tutorial, the bond we have is very limited, just something like 200 and uh, 25,000 is very limited data set. So we can go to step four as stamp four and four. So So you see here, basically that uh, we would try to estimate the, the standard, uh, standard deviation of the phase. And uh, if uh, we set it's equal to one, so nothing, uh, we, uh, if we rough something like just here, we, we, we got something like this one. So if we set maybe just a, a little bit more, um, uh, more difficult for standard deviation like 0 0.8, so for a symbol, we try to set all the parameter and see what's going on. If, uh, to do that, we, I can, we can have uh, some formula like uh, set parameter, as you see. Uh, before that one, you can check uh, what about um, uh, the value of the standard deviation here based on get parameter. So you can click on this one this one for you to easy. So you get parameter and you see here the standard deviation in here they define something related to uh, one. So if I change this one to set parameter to try to do a little bit uh, interactive to understand the, uh, the software to got to be familiar so you about a. So, okay, I got it. And we can run the step four again. Just to be sure that everything we, we have is very loud noise. Sorry, let's wait.
So you see here, here it's a little bit different. The last one is about 225,000. Here it's slightly smaller. So uh, basically that uh, we rub some uh, something noise. So we hope that after this one, it will, it will be fine. So we track. Okay, so we got to, to step one, five to try to do a uh, phase correction. And if we, uh, we want, we can uh, that's some data. We merge together. Why we have to merge? Because sometimes that we processing a lot of uh, big data. So we had to divide a lot of uh, bus here. But in our data, we had just one bus. So there is no nothing to, to merge. So we're going to step five. And we just can run it five and five. When do we need the uh, web time? We need to be changed. It's a very good question. So uh, let's get parameter. So what when time here? So usually that uh, we uh, we use in this one and just try to rob something that the the bit cell is uh, quite a very long time, but. Uh, Basically, that uh, two years is set uh, is okay. Three hundred and seventy day is related to about two years. Two Z is okay. Usually, well, this parameter not not necessary to change because uh, if you change it, it doesn't change uh, a lot. Perhaps it's not really sensitivity. The most sensitivity is uh, you can uh, because that is then a standard deviation. But what does it mean standard deviation here? For example, when you run this one, you can try after step five, we step, we already done it, step five. So we you can check uh, PS information here. And you can see here. So uh, basically that's uh, when we done this one, we can see the information uh, they estimate for the whole image, for the first image, for the whole uh, BS network, and they estimate about the standard, uh, standard deviation of the phase. You see, it's something related to uh, about um, 20 degree until about 32 degree. So kind of say that the less time, less time, uh, 36 degree, right? So basically that uh, kind of say they, uh, they uh, reasonable uh, like yesterday we we doing with um, uh, the Sigma phase at, uh, expectation for a certain uh, acquisition. We suppose that the sigma phase is something like 36 degree. And in this case, we got something like 6.8 millimeter accuracy for using just one single image. So whenever we done step five, for me, I done step five already. I'm not, I'm not sure why in uh, Linux it costs low. Oh, where are you now, everyone? Uh, I'm in step five, but uh, in, step five. Uh, in uh, Linux, I got uh, a lot more PSs. Uh, I'm not sure if I skipped a step, but I got like uh, 570,000 PS. Yeah, exactly, because why? Because when you uh, when you do this one, you got this uh, threshold up to uh, zero, uh, 0 0.25, right? Uh, yeah, I think I set it. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah, exactly. Because for me, I, I just set 0 0.2, and that's why the, the data is uh, a, a little bit smaller with respect to you. I mean, in my computer, it's just 229,000. Okay. okay. Yeah, because the, the difference are threshold. So, but basically that we should set this one, something related to uh, 0 0.4. So usually this one is 0 0.4 is okay. Okay, okay. So, 
this one, year one. Huh? But in my tutorial, I put it year one too, just to speak up. Because why? Because in this tutorial, we don't need to, to have a, a very uh, complex data, uh, complex uh, processing to try to do some demonstration. Okay, it's done for step three in, in the Linux also. So I'm going to step. Uh, so uh, I'm going to step uh, four. And I want to set uh, uh, to get parameter. Parameter. So I want to set the parameter of, uh, of this guy is about something like something like zero point a. And I run, so I run, you see, if I run to step four, at this starting step, I can run until step five. So I look, so it's running here. So we waiting together to see the Linux and the Windows. So everything is okay. So, uh, This will be fun. So where we are, we finish with this one. We go into this one. Okay. Uh, when we, whenever we're done, we track the information of the path and force. Uh, what we track already here, we got something like the total here, and the, the noise, uh, the standard deviation of this image here. here. So we are here. The baseline information, you can track it here, you see here. The baseline information from a sensor one data is something like, you see, uh, maximum something like 100 meter. So uh, with the sensing one, the, the orbit tube is very is quite relatively small. So basically that's the, the maximum number we got is something related to 110 meter. It's really, really small with respect to all the data set. I don't know if there anyone who come from uh, Italy. The anyone, let me check. Uh, the anyone who come from Italy? Yes. Yes. In Italy, you have uh, the Cosmos sky map as uh, something uh, uh, that is con constellation, which offer uh, a lot of data yes. from the sky. And the Cosmos sky maps, they have uh, the uh, sometimes they have uh, the the baseline until something like. 500 meter or something like this one so when we're dealing with cosmos climate you have to be carefully with uh, with this um, parameter with the uh, with the baseline mm -hmm. so, uh, i can show you for this symbol that uh, uh when we go into the, the cosmos climate we let me try yeah is this is it Like you see here in the Cosmos KMS, usually that the, the, um, the baseline is very large. It's going to something like 400 meter here. So when we uh, uh, select the master, we have to be carefully because otherwise, we, if we had the baseline is too large, we end up with some problem of the decorrelation, something like we don't have any uh, coherence, meaningful to do further processing. So you see, with Cosmos Sky Maps, we have the baseline very low with respect to the one we have in the um, in the in the second one. Second one is something you see here, maximum something like one hundred ten meter as maximum. But in Cosmos Sky Maps, you see they can go until four hundred or even more. So with all the data set, you have to be. Be careful and pay attention 
with the baseline configuration. Okay, good to know. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we're done for, uh, let me track everything's okay. So, it's a PF info. So, we can see that the, the total image here is it exactly the same. You see here, whatever it is window or Linux is the same. So, the stable. Uh, targets we have is something like 224,000 and the baseline is here and the standard standard deviation is something like this one. So this one is quite important why whenever you've done uh, further um, analysis, you have to be sure that the BS information, the standard deviation, it should be something like this one. So this guy, I mean, uh, the standard deviation here, it should be something like reasonable is about uh, 30 degree, about from zero to 40 degrees, okay? So pay attention, that's the standard version here. is something like ranging from uh, zero to 40 degree. If it larger, if it larger 40 degree, you have to end up with uh, all the parameter like this one. You have to define the standard deviation, maybe uh, 0 0.5 or 0 0.7. Just try to reduce this one. This one should be about something like 40 degree. Try to remember. Otherwise, you will have something very nice in your final results. So remember. Okay. Okay, everyone. Uh, okay, so uh, where we are, so uh, we're going to step uh, six. So step six, what is this? Step six is, uh, step six is basically that we're going to um, uh, fire and wrapping. So uh, we know very well fire and wrapping, we're using Snapple, and in STEM, they're using Snapple also. So to be sure that everything is correctly, we have to be check that Snapple is correctly. Install, yeah, we have Snapple in here. And this one, we have Snapple. Yes, so uh, in Linux or in Windows, we have Snapple. So if we have Snapple, we can go to the unwrapping. So we can go to Snap. Uh, sys, uh, sys. Run. So it's quite very, really uh, fast. So everything is done in just a, a couple of minutes. So whenever you are here, you can block something like you feel like, okay, like velocity. Okay, for everyone. Whenever you done or step six, I mean after you do fire and wrapping, you can have that one.
Emmanuel, did you got something similar? Uh, yes, I got something uh, similar. Great. It's perfect. Well done. Thank you. Uh, just a question. So uh, yes. this is NAFU that is applied on a set of sparse points. Uh, how is this done? Uh, basically that they try to resample the stack boy to two dimension of boy and they estimate uh, and they do unwrapping from that one and they try to extract the um, that's one and they go back to the the um, point and they do three dimensional phase unwrapping so in fact in stamp they do three, three dimension phase unwrapping they using snafu just for calculate the weight only so and for snafu they have to reform how can i say they have to resample the the bond here in two dimension here you can check that parameter here for example we can get the parameter so you can see here when they do the final wrapping using snafu they have to transform um, the distribution of the point here in two 200 meter for two dimension image so that's right so we okay. they have to run in the image two dimension Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. This is clear. Thank you. Yes. So uh, if you finish the step uh, six, uh, okay, so we can go further to step seven. So basically in step seven, they, they we try to estimate them. Um, that the contribution of the topography, I mean, basically that's a, the the component here, the component of uh, residue of topography, and uh, we can go, or we can run forward by spam uh, seven by seven. Okay. So basically, it's, it will be all very transparent. <clears throat> So whenever we've done the step seven, we can uh, Plot this one, but uh, subtract by the contribution of the topography by D. So we got this one. <clears throat> so you see the, the data is a little bit uh, better. Mm. 
but just slightly better. Why? Because basically that the baseline is quite relatively small. So whenever they done for the residue of topography, not really well performance because the baseline is quite re related to few just 100 meter maximum. That's why for assembly you can see in in this one. <clears throat> So you see here, if the baseline is quite related, uh, limited, and the fit of the observ observation with respect to the residue of topography will be have a strong effect if the normal baseline is not uh, not really uh, wide range. So it just limited about something like one hundred meter to minus one hundred meter. It's not really well performance to correct the residue of topography. Caps are it's not really sensitive. That is why you can see here, here is the, the V, uh, if we correct the D, what about the, the previous one? The previous one is here. So you see here, but in this Y, this one is without the um, contribution of the DM, the residue, and this one is, the, is with the DM mitigation. And you see the data is quite, not really uh, totally different quite similar because why it means that the residue of topography is quite correlated small. So uh, after step seven, we also have the orbit gram. So we can have something like minus DO, so O is mean the orbit gram. So basically that if there is some very strong uh, constru uh, low, <clears throat> low frequency phase contribution, we can try so you see here. So uh, what you see here, and uh, what about the other one? So basically, with respect to the uh, no orbit gram removing, you see here that the, in the uh, orbit they have uh, removed a very a very um, uh, low frequency of the phase here. So you see here that he the a little bit the baton is clear more clearer here. He is not really clear. So with the orbit they can improve this one, and because of that one, if we have the orbit and we have the, D, um, the, um, the DM and we subtract the, uh, the, um, the phase and we do the phase unwrapping together. And in that case, the phase unwrapping can be improved something. And to do that, we can uh, even run. Uh, so we can get this one, this one. And I I'm also highlight that one in the computer. So, let me track uh, uh, Okay, let me track uh, here. I just already tell you that uh, if we change in the, um, the unwrapping side, so it, it can be have uh, some effect also. Uh, okay, if we want, we can try to see the, um, the unwrapping also here. So. If you're interested, I can show you what is first. Can I say here? This is the one we have for the um, for the unwrapping. So we will see this one. So you see that that is the unwrapping phase. So you see the phase is ranging from minus 56.8 until 49.2. So that is the absolute phase. And you see how the phase is a changing at a function of time here. And uh, to do that, we to, to track the, the rough phase, we have the rough phase.
you see here on the left is the rough phase. So you see the rough phase, the phase on way locked by the limitation line minus pi until pi here. So minus 3.14 until uh, 3.1. So basically that is the phase you see from here to here is the job of the phase unwrapping. So one way to improve the pain wrapping, if you see something wrong, maybe uh, in here it's not really clear, but um, in some case in your application, you can fade down some uh, problem with the pain wrapping. You can rerun it after you run the step seven. In that case, it can give us some, uh, some way to improve pain wrapping by subtract the RAM estimated from the step seven and in that case you set uh, this the ram here nice you said that that's one going to yes so if in that they before they do fail wrapping they will try to subtract the contribution from the residue of the topography and the obvious information so in that case because the in that case the the rough phase will be more cleaner. Maybe the signal to noise is better. And in that case, it has the probability to improve the fail and wrapping better. So we can use that one. We can run step six again. And uh, we don't need to uh, step six and six. We turn step six and seven. So we started from uh, step six to do fail and wrapping again and uh, run step seven. So you run it here. So you see, it's quite very fast. So let's track together. So uh, video. So you see, that is our final product. And you see here, um, we have we uh, we want to improve a little bit here. Here they don't have anything related to a fair from boy. Basically, that they estimate for the whole image. And they assume that the average of the whole image is close to zero. And that's the image is preferred now. So we want to change it. So we know very well that in this area in Mexico City, they have a strong subsidence here, but go far away here when they have a geological staple zone. Now this area here, they quite related staple. So we want to be, we just want to assume that this area is very stable. So we assume that the velocity here is, is close to zero. So we set, we try to set the reference point close to this area here. In my, in, uh, in my uh, tutorial, I also give that parameter like this one. You see here, you can set this one, go to this one. Okay, so set this one. So okay, and this one set parameter to parameter. Okay, and here is before preference, and I got about the preference later. So you see here, this one in. Is they not refer to anything, they refer to the whole image. And this one, they refer to this table uh, target here. So they assume that they uh, the result is close to zero here. So we got something like this one. So you see the Mexico City is a very, uh, very serious 
area. Why? Because in the center of city, you can easy to recognize that the, the subsidence is uh, going on with a velocity of very dangerous number, something like um, something like close to uh, 19 centimeters per year. So you see that? That's 19 centimeters per year. So uh, this is uh, like a very big value. There's nowhere else where we see this velocity. Uh, in my opinion, that, that's it. Uh, Mexico is a very famous one for the serious one here. Yeah. There are other famous spots in Mexico. Yeah. On the city, um, I don't know, but Mexico is very famous for that one. Yeah. Um, I think Toluca Valley. From uh, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of paper in Mexico. Um, yeah, this big subsidence there. Subsidence. Emmanuel asked just uh, why the maximum number here is a little bit different from the PDF file. That's a good question because in the PDF file, I'm using the, um, the threshold of the two, uh, 0 0.25. And uh, in this uh, tutorial, I just train a little bit at the, uh, 0 0.2. So that's why they they not uh, uh, have a similar uh, result in the PDF file here, but I guess that uh, if you use in the zero point two five, you will got exactly the same in the PDF one here. And for example, if you want to see the image here, you can got something like uh, four. You will see the image. So uh, we we done it. We see something useful information related to uh, subsidence, and you know very well that uh, Mexico is a famous last one. So there's a lot, a lot of uh, study in Mexico using Insta data. You know that uh, from uh, two thousand from uh, 1993 until now is uh, something like thirty year. There is more than hundreds of paper writing about Mexico City subsidence using the INSA. So you see that, you see the, the number? Over 30 years, there is on there's more than 100 paper talking about the Mexico City subsidence using INSA. So if you want to study for Mexico, that is uh, also a very good topic for your um, research. So now here is just an average uh, velocity. So our interest in E, we want to see what is the, um, uh, the change at a certain position at a function of time and to see how the trend line is. We doing that by using a certain what we call the time series series plot so we got this one for same video uh, draw ah VDTS and make a mistake so 
CPPS and video and time series. So good, everyone. So we are here. So we try to understand the time series at the function of time. So we click on that. We type this command in the in the MATLAB, and then we click on the time series uh, plot, and then we select a certain area of interest in, and we can set the, the buffer is something like 50 meter or no or 100 meter, and then we will see this one. So we got this one. So you can jump it in here. You can click on tie series plot here. You click on that one. Then we have crosshair here. So if you want to see how it's going on here at the function of tie, so you can click on this one. And then you see. So uh around the, the radius of 100 meter, they got something like how many points here? One, two, three, four. And they calculate the average here. And they do uh, the, um, the function of time. So the time series of the subsidence is here. So the zero is corresponding exactly to the 2010, uh, 2008, sorry, 2008, September. So uh, the question, I changed uh, web standard deviation. Yeah, it's okay for you, that's, that's okay, no problem. Choose them. Right, uh, it's okay, no problem. Because you, you said, uh, because you, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have a lot of uh, scatter, it's okay, no problem. So suppose I want to do on the area and uh, with maybe more more image than like 150 image uh, with more buffer, I create the buffer radian going to 150 and I select this one. Uh, so to see here, you see here, he is very stable. So let, let me track this one, is this table? So you see here, he just about a few millimeter can be observed, right? And one here is uh, trying to remember this one. He's he, he lost. He is something like three hundred millimeter until minus two hundred millimeter. So it means that after uh, four years, so basically that's half of meter. So 0 0.5 meter already changing. So you see this area here and this area here. So everything is crazy. So you see that whenever the subsidence happened here, it can be a fact to infrastructure, it can be a fact to the human building, and if you live in there, so there's a lot of uh, attention because the building uh, can collapse uh, whenever. And this one, is, I think, in my opinion, is a very serious one because why? Because in all the stable city, in all the area, like uh, in general in the city with this table like in paris or in new york the val the value uh, the, va the value changing from just about minus five millimeter per year until five millimeter per year and that's all and here is a loss a really real a loss so if we want to do something like compare the two different area like this one and this one you can check on the tertiary triple difference. So we can check this one and you can check on this one. 
and you can see the difference here. So if we take the first point and second point and they estimate the difference here. Again, just try to show you here. Very serious one, so you see. So where are you? How do we compare the BS measurement with uh, GBS uh, measurement? That's the other story. I mean, uh, whenever we have the, um, the inside data, we can extract this, uh, this one and to compare with uh, GBS one. So basically that's the, uh, uh, that the, uh, the you can use in uh, many, uh, uh, I mean, you put together like you have a GBS one and you have the inside one. So you put together to see it. Uh, but we cannot do it in the stamp. Stamp doesn't support. It just uh, it's after uh, it's after uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. For the accuracy of uh, this uh, result, uh, is there uh, like a map of the accuracy in uh, millimeters per year or something like that that we can uh, look at or generate? Uh, yes, uh, um, one way to be sure that the, the data is uh, good, but we have to quantify the uncertainty. Uh, one way we calculate the standard, standard deviation just to be sure that uh, the, the data is good performance or not. So we can, uh, we can have it here. Let me try if we, so basically that with BS uh, plus, uh, with the VS uh, DO, so we got it here. So they they will calculate the standard deviation. So you will have some idea about the uncertainty. So uh, MISA they uh Ask about the question, what are the factors that can affect the silent estimation accuracy? Of course, it depends on the, the methodology. If you're using the DBS technique, you can got something like millimeter per year accuracy. If you're using the s path methods, you can end up with something like centimeter uh, per year. Like all the factors that's uh, uh, the number of images, if you have many images, it will decrease your errors bucket. So basically that if you're using uh, uh, about a few images, like uh, five images or six images, it's difficult to say something. But if you have a 20 or 100 images or even 200 images, it's okay. It will be fine. So you see here, here is the, uh, the standard deviation. So basically that uh, the, um, the red one is quite close to zero. It means that uh, they very uh, uh, very well performance here, but 
in all the area we've close to the the area where we have a lot of subsidence the standard deviation is a little bit uh, uh, bigger why because that in that case the face is a little bit noisy why because they they change it a lot here 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 but compared to the the absolute value i mean if we take this one and compare to this one it's reasonable why because in this area here the um, uh, the subsidence or the surface almost stable kind of say they just about few millimeters per year and then with standard deviation about 0.3 millimeter is reasonable he is the a about three millimeter per year, but the value here is about 100 or even 200 millimeter per year. I mean, it's something like five percent. You got it here, this one, and and this one. So this value here, so it's close to here. For, I I mean, critical one here, close to here, close to here, something like a millimeter and the color here is about 119 millimeter so can i say is less than five five percent so it's okay so the fit is perfectly so we can assume that uh, the subsidence in mexico city is mostly uh, linear because why because the velocity and extended variation can represent uh, very well the surface and the standard deviation is not really uh, far away from um, the, the the velocity average. In the velocity, in the standard deviation here, they just uh, highlight about the, the difference between the, the modeling here, here is the linear velocity modeling, and here is the observation and modeling. So the, the standard deviation just show up the, the quality between the fit between the model and the observation. And what we see here, they they call it close to zero, so we can assume everything here is one but ten, but the linear uh, deformation, and this area is almost acceptable because why? Because the relative, uh, it is about five percent, and sometimes that's in some area in some uh, area, the phenomena is not really going to linear like this one. Because why? Because re remember that I show you an example trick about the um, the, the, uh, the phase here. In some area, if they have some uh, some uh, some uh, effect of the human eye, like they uh, they extract the the gas or the carbon dioxide. In that case, they have something like a seasonable a seasonal a season a season phenomenon like this one. And in that case, if we fit a linear velocity, it can be have strong effect. And in that case, the velocity will be very large. I mean, sorry, the standard deviation of velocity will be very large here. And in the in the Mexico City, we don't see that phenomenon. I mean, the velocity standard deviation is almost close to zero. And in fact, many value is close to the yellow one. And yellow one, I expect something like three or four millimeters per year and three or four millimeters per year, with respect to 200 millimeters per year is almost nothing. Uh, excuse me, uh, what the, the blue color in velocity mean a flip item? Uh, yes, uh, David, because uh, in here, we, we don't know the kind of we don't have the measurements. We don't have it, but we just assume everything close to this area here. We assume that uh, this one is stable. It means this one is not changing uh, during four years. So this one is stable. So the the red one, it should be going down. I mean, uh, that they, that is the subsidence going to downward. And the blue one, it should be going to uplift. Uh, it's reasonable. Why? Because, uh, well, because if we refer this one, and we're not sure this one, 100% this can be go, go down or up. We just assume that this one is stable. And in that case, we can see something go up and go down. If we know if we know for sure that this one, it should be stable. And in that case, 
the 41.8 millimeter per year can be uh, defined by zero. And in that case, we end up with not only uh, 168.3, but we have to end up with uh, the sum the summation of this one and this one. And it can go and it can go into 222 uh, something like that. So in the uplift, nothing wrong. It's okay. It just the problem a preference one. Can we map the temporal coherence or the or the residual of the the velocity versus the temporal coherence of velocity? Uh, very good question. I don't know how to do that. Let me check. <laughs> BS. Awesome. Or just something like the residual of the velocity map with the, the model? Uh, yeah, uh, something like that's one. Let me try it if we have it now. I think if we do that, we have to, to calculate something because uh, at least the stand, they don't have a support for that thing. Like, okay, let me try the topography, wrap fade, filtering, and wrapping residue here. But uh, that's offered only in in small baseline. Um, no, but in fact, if you want, you can uh, carefully look at the, the final product here. If you can see, there is some uh, calculation related to coherence. If you, you see on my, uh, my window, you see if I click on this one and I can appreciate some information related to coherence and the phase residue here, and in that case, if you want to estimate or uh, you want to calculate, you can extract this information to, to do further analysis or something like this one. But in, in the current form, they don't support to plus something like that one. But yeah, but usually that if you want, you can just got this one and you, you get for your ana further analysis. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably easy to to find it. Okay. So you see, here is a coherence, and here is the phase residue. In that case, if you want to do further analysis, you can uh, keep this one and keep moving on. So uh, where we are now? Okay, we finished. We done enough. Where are you now? Everyone? Do you follow everything? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I would yes, have thank you. one more question uh, I posted in the chat. How to account for snow cover, for example? Uh, which one? That's your itinerary, Thomas, right? In general, how could we account for average influence and now cover it in beer is a workflow? So basically, that we stop here. We stop here with the step seven. So basically, where we stop seven, uh, we, if we go to uh, step A, this time also have a step A and nine. And in that case, they will estimate for, uh, for you the atmospheric influence and uh, something like that one. And uh, if you can remove that one, you can uh, have more 
PS in the snow cover on that one. But you have to move to step A and 9. And in step A and 9, you need something like order to box, like what we call the strength, the, the trend to box here. You see here, you have to improve it a little bit using order to box. But in that case, you can move it on step A and 9. In Mexico City, it's something easy because why? Because the atmospheric uh, turbulence is not really strong over there. That's why we don't need to go to step A and 9. In all the scenario, like you said, in snow cover or even in a tropical country, like uh, in ASEAN or in, um, in uh, all the country in uh, South America, we need to go into step A and 9 also. But don't worry. You are familiar with step uh, one to seven, and then you are to step A and I later in your future research. Have I answered your question, Thomas? Yes, thanks. Welcome. Uh, excuse me, I have one question. Uh, yes. Like uh, when we get this subsidence map, ultimately we need to do validation. So is there any some uh, like online portal that report uh, some reference data for some specific sites uh, for subsidence that we can get and later use it for validation? Uh, so what? my understanding is whenever you have this one and you want yeah. to do validation, yeah. uh, in that case, you can, uh, because here you had the file already, Whenever you done it, you for assemble. Like okay, we have PS plus this is one hmm. video. Uh, support up if you want to store it in a, in a certain file. You got the option like something like uh, minus one. They will they will write the data in a map file, and in this case, you have all information minus one here so you have this one so you have this one so that is the, the velocity and then in the other file of the matlab you also have the what we call the longitude and latitude uh, the longitude and latitude mm -hmm. yeah so you had the position you had the value so you can tag it to do whatever comparison can be. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I think uh, I do not explain my question well. I, I, I just wanna ask, is there any, uh, some portal online that provide uh, point-based uh, some subsidence value that we can use for validation uh, for our inside product? Ah. So I got it. It means that if there any uh, person who puts online their point to do a reference for, uh, for the inside products, you mean? Yes, like for some hot sports like Jakarta or Mexico City, these kind of places, is there any online portal from some organization that provides us reference data of subsidence uh, like daily, weekly, or monthly? Mm, I for the inside I don't know, but for the GBS I guess it uh, will be a loss, and because the GBS is only um, uh, how can I say it's, it's only available service to provide mm -hmm. products, but in one location only. In that case, you can use that's one that's one to compare with inside products, but for the inside products I don't know, but for example, if you want to focus on a certain area like. Mm -hmm. Mexico City, you have to go into find some information related in, in the internet and try to contact with the person who have the, the data EC2 and try to do some certain collaboration yes. in the data to do validation. But mm -hmm. I mean, the, the public data available for a certain position, uh, I'm not sure is it's available for uh, ISA, but it's available for the GBS. I know for GBS is available. For other or for other data, no. I see. I see. Yeah. So Emmanuel, uh, yeah, Emmanuel have a question about the Nova. Yeah, they basically that they do uh, time series uh, processing and they put it uh, online for the Nova yeah. uh, website. Yeah. 
So just one last question. When, yes. when we are collecting data set for PS sensor, so beside uh, like the, there is one uh, uh, parameter that we need to consider is baseline. Is there any like, uh, do we also need to consider whether when we are selecting for a candidate image for PS insert? There's a lot of algorithm to do for the PS insert in this, but uh, basically that in, um, uh, in, in STEM, they, uh, uh, they do PS selection based into uh, two steps. The first is based uh, just in uh, amplitude, like we, we did in the empty preparation snap, a snap, snap, and then they go into step one, two, three, four, just basically they try to analyze it for the phase st stability, and they do the, um, the BS selection. And whenever they have the good candidate, they're going to fail wrapping, and you got the result what we, are, what we already done here. For mm -hmm. the other approach, so uh, basically that's a, you can, um, uh, how can I say? There's many uh, other approaches, but uh, you have to write something uh, meaningful and you can put it in uh, STAM. So, but in STAM, in my opinion, that's a very good also for the PS processing. Uh, in my opinion, if you're working on the PS processing, you don't need to worry about anything about the quality of the PS uh, selection. Because uh, some BF selection is uh, stay up the arc, I can say it's very good and it's quite, in, uh, it's, it's quite uh, the first and the second uh, uh, candidate. So don't worry about anything about how to select better DS selection. No, it's not necessary. And the, in my opinion, the, the best way to improve the quality is uh, you have a good data. Like if you have instead of using just about in this tutorial, we have about just about 20 images, uh, but we can improve the quality by using not only 20 images, but we can improve it in maybe 200 images or maybe the whole image available to do processing. And in this case, it helped us a lot in terms of uh, quality. All right, all right. Yeah.